Hey everyone, it's Sarah Threadster, NurseRN.com, and in this video, I'm gonna go over our weekly NCLEX question. This video will be part of a weekly series where I will be covering NCLEX questions with you all, and we'll be going over how to break them down, how to eliminate the choices, and I'm gonna show you how I typically do it. So let's get to it. Okay, this question says, you have just received nursing report from the previous shift and are performing morning patient assessments. You have a total of four patients that are either post-op or pre-op for surgery. Which assessment finding requires further nursing action? A, orange colored urine in a patient who is taking peridium and is post-op day three from a TERP. B, no stool excretion in a patient who is post-op day two from a colostomy. C, shoulder pain in a patient who is post-op day one from a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Or D, pain rating that has decreased from 10 to zero in a patient who is awaiting an appendectomy. The first thing I like to do is I like to analyze my scenario. I want to make sure I know exactly what this question is asking before I start going over these options because NCLEX questions like to give you a lot of filler um, and lead you down these different roads and you really need to know what this question wants to know because you can answer it incorrectly. Okay. This question specifically wants to know which finding did I find during my morning assessment that requires that I take further action. So it's going to be something that um, may lead to the patient becoming very unstable. It's like a warning sign or something that requires, if they're pre-op, something that requires me to notify the doctor before they go for surgery or a possible complication or something that's happened. So um, we know from the scenario that we're taking care of post-op and pre-op patients. So another thing you wanna be thinking is post-op. Okay, what are things that are normal after surgery for specific surgeries or for specific cases? So you wanna be thinking in that realm. And pre-op, what are some things that a patient should have done before they go for surgery? or something that may be happening prior to surgery, like a complication. So you wanna have those thinking hats on before you analyze your scenario. Okay, so let's take one by one and dissect it. Okay, option A, this patient is having orange colored urine and they're post-op day three from a TERP. Okay, what is a TERP? This is a transurethral resection of the prostate. So it's a urinary procedure where they went in to correct the urinary because a lot of patients with enlarged prostates have urinary problems. So they went in and tried to correct that. And um, they're taking peridium. Well, what is peridium? Well, think back to our urinary tract infection video. We went over peridium. And peridium is also called urostat, and it is like an analgesic that helps coat the bladder and the urethra to relieve pain and spasm. So we expect a patient with a TERP, they may be taking peridium. However, is orange colored urine normal with this medication? And it is absolutely normal. Now, if someone was answering this question without the nursing knowledge, um, they, would they would probably think that, oh no, orange colored urine is not normal, so this must be it. I need to further evaluate it. But we know from our nursing knowledge that this is normal, so we can go ahead and mark off A. That's not the answer. Okay, B, this patient just had a colostomy. Okay, you gotta think back to GI. What is a colostomy? Well, we learned in our GI series that a colostomy is a surgery. A lot of times when patients have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, they may have a permanent one place or a temporary. And um, this is where they bring the surface of specifically the colon, because it's a colostomy, to the surface of the skin and allows stool excretion. Well, this patient is post-op day two. Should they be excreting stool by now? Because a lot of times in nursing, it's really drilled in her head. After surgery, they need to have a bowel movement. That lets us know that the bowels are working. So is this normal? Well, let's think about what a, where the colostomy is located. Colostomy is like the last part of your, your GI system. It's um, the colon. So um, chances are, before surgery, they were nothing by mouth 
probably starting them on clears, maybe fulls. And it's gonna take a while for that to get to the stomach if they are eating to produce stool. Because sometimes you can have mucus. But it does take sometimes post-op day three or four for them to actually produce stool. Now, if this was an ileostomy, we would expect stool literally probably that day or the next day because it's in the small intestine, the ileum, and it's gonna start producing that greenish um, liquid stool almost like immediately or the next day. So this, isn't, this doesn't require further nursing action because um, we just need to continue to monitor them, make sure they do put it out in around three or four days, but right now, no. Okay, C, this patient is post-op day one, and they had a cholecystectomy. What is that? That is removal of the gallbladder, and they did it. Our key thing is laparoscopic. So we learn really in our appendectomy about the appendicitis videos, what laparoscopic was. And um, you wanna think back to that, because you have to think, what are they doing during this procedure? Whenever they do that, they inflate the abdomen, in a sense, to pull the ab abdominal wall off of the organs so they can get in there and they can operate on that organ. And they do that with carbon dioxide. So post-op day one, two, maybe even three, the patient may start having shoulder pain as that carbon dioxide is diffusing through the system. So that is normal, the patient needs to be reassured. But again, if you didn't have this nursing knowledge, you would think that could be alarming, but considering it was laparoscopic, it's normal. Okay, let's look at our last option. I wonder what the answer is. Okay, this patient had, um, is, is gonna go for an appendectomy. We know an appendectomy is removal of the appendix. Why would anyone have removal of appendix? Usually in cases of appendicitis. So this patient has appendicitis. Well, all of a sudden their pain, they've been having a pain of 10, it has gone away. They're having absolutely no pain. Well, some people may think, well, the pain medicine that the previous shift maybe has worked for them and that's good, they're not having pain, that's what we want. It's not good whenever you have um, a patient with appendicitis because what has happened, if you have a patient go from having pain to absolutely no pain and they're relieved, that can mean that that appendix has ruptured. And um, although they're feeling okay right now, peritonitis is gonna set in, septic, everything. So this requires immediate nursing action. Notify the physician. Um, the appendix has probably ruptured, need to go in for surgery and fix that immediately. Okay, so that is how you answer that question. Don't forget to tune in for our next weekly NCLEX question.